Canadians are constantly perplexed as to the bizarre behavior of the RCMP, especially during these times of uncertainty as to what is taking place in Canada. Amid confusion and the false flag policies, together with the draconian guidelines being imposed on, we the people, most Canadians are unaware of the realities surrounding them, particularly in matters they are not taking the time to research. For the most part this is caused by normalcy bias which creates cognitive dissonance, leaving them at the mercy of the government who created this snare to keep the people uninformed as to the truth. However, there is a lingering question that is beginning to catch the attention of we the people, why does the RCMP not swear an oath to, we the people? And why do they appear to be neutral? When an RCMP officer is sworn in, the oath is made up of three parts. First, Oath of Allegiance do you solemnly swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, her heirs and successors according to the law, so help you God? Second, Oath of Office, do you solemnly swear that you will faithfully, diligently and impartially execute and perform the duties required of you as a member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and will well and truly obey and perform all lawful orders and instructions that you receive, without fear? favor or affection of or towards any person, so help you God? Third, Oath of Secrecy, do you solemnly swear that you will keep absolutely secret all knowledge and information of which you may become possessed through your position with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, that you will not, without due authority in that behalf, discuss with members of the force, or any other person, either by word or by letter, any matter which may come to your notice through your employment with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, so help you God? To each of these questions, the response is, I do so swear. It is for this reason that they are beginning to behave in a manner that is shocking to Canadians. Surprisingly, they swear an oath to a foreign entity to protect the corporation, not to, we the people. Why? Because Canada's infrastructure is that of a corporation. That's right folks. Canada is a corporation which follows the Constitution Act 1982. It is important to comprehend, that this is not a constitution, it's an act, which is a statue. Essentially, the act is a law brought in by a group of men, and not a constitution brought in by permission of, we the people. What does this mean for Canadians? Canadians believe they have a constitution, yet in reality there is no constitution. When Pierre Elliott Trudeau signed the Act of 1982, a fundamental process was conveniently bypassed which was to obtain permission from, we the people, as to how we wanted to be governed. This never transpired. As a result, the a constitution was never implemented in Canada, therefore, the present government bodies are fraudulently ruling, we the people, under the guise that a constitution exists. Nothing could be further from the truth. Canadians must work together, united as a whole which is the key. Unify the people is creating a constitution that represents both men and women's unalienable rights, liberties, and freedoms. This constitution will create an accountable administration that is responsible to the sovereigns. Hence, people from all provinces and territories have an opportunity to learn and voice their options, and to actively participate in the transition to force changes to policies through their interactive website. To learn more visit, unifythepeople.ca. Statutes are an act of the legislature adopted under its constitutional authority, by prescribed means and in certain form, so that it becomes the law, governing behavior within its scope. Consequently, the constitutional authority that enacted the Constitution Act 1982, is fraudulent, because the constitutional authority is given to the governing bodies by, we the people, which was never given to them. Statutes are enacted to prescribe behavior, define crimes, create inferior government bodies, appropriate public monies, and in general to promote the public welfare. Hence, society is falsely led to believe, that statutes are laws. This is a deceitful fallacy. Why? Because, a statute is defined as a legislated rule of society which has the force of law. But only within a society. Therefore, what is a society? The definition of a society has been given as a number of people, joined by mutual consent, to deliberate, determine and act for a common goal. Clearly, these statutes only have the force of law over those who have consented to be a member of the society governed by those statutes. Therefore, when did the government receive permission to govern by, 
we the people? Consent is a tricky legality concept in itself. It does not require a positive confirmation from you, your silence and indecisiveness suffice to raise the appearance of consent. Hence, this is what is meant by the term, silence implies consent. Anything with the word act in its title is an act of the parliament or a legislature and is in fact a statute. The simple fact is you have the right to exist without those statutes having the force of law. Perhaps Jesus spoke of not being of the existing kingdom, he may have been referring to not being a member of society, the magistrates presiding in those days. Consequently, the word kingdom referred to a structured society. In Canada, the original birth certificate is generally created at the provincial level, in some rare instances municipal level, via birth documents from the hospital, for which the hospital receives X amount of dollars, from the province for causing the registration of the birth, and passed to the provincial and federal levels, and likely elsewhere. As per the definition of birth the document references both the newborn and the straw man. Certified copies of the birth certificate may be obtained at the Vital Statistics Office. Birth certificates are one-of-a-kind security instruments used by the government to obtain loans. The act of being born or wholly brought into separate existence. A man or a woman is born, straw men are wholly brought into separate existence. Each event qualifies as a birth. The birth certificate documents are muddy mixtures of the two events that allows the system to claim that it is your birth certificate, and also claim to hold title to, not ownership of, the corporately colored straw man. We are the collateral for the interest on the loan of the World Bank. Each of us is registered, via the application for a birth certificate. The Treasury issues a bond on the birth certificate and the bond is sold at a securities exchange and bought by the Federal Reserve Bank or Bank of Canada, which then uses it as collateral to issue banknotes. The bond is held in trust for the Feds at the Depository Trust Corporation. We are the sureties on the said bonds. Our labor-slash-energy is then payable at some future date. Do not underestimate the power behind this trick. This deception is used to defraud us into contracting with the feds, so that they can legally confiscate our property. Because there is no full disclosure, and we're never told that we have just signed away what is our property, these contracts are fraudulent. Hence, we are still the lawful owner, and the profit earned by the feds from stolen securities really belongs to us and must go into a fund for our benefit, otherwise it would be fraud. Not wanting to be charged with fraud, the feds had to create a remedy, and hope we wouldn't discover it. If you examine your birth certificate you will find a number that begins with a letter on the top right corner. On the small plastic card, the number may appear on the back of the card. On the larger birth certificate printed on bank note paper the red number may be on the front. In Canada this comes from the Canadian Bank Note Company Limited. This information can be found along the bottom center edge of the note. The location of these items can vary between birth certificates. If you are holding one of these, you are holding a certified copy of a bank note in your name that has a value. The number beginning with a letter is a bond number or a bond tracking number. This bond is legally and lawfully yours. This is the most important fact the World Bank does not want you to know. Even though the country was bankrupt the banks could not take away our rights and freedoms, so they force the government to create an artificial corporation, straw man, in your name. Then they had you sign fraudulent contracts to accept the privileges and benefits attached to this artificial corporation. These contracts are signed with your SIN number, registrations, and other licenses because you were led to believe this artificial corporation was you and that you were obliged to sign. They did not tell you that by signing these contracts you were signing away your lawful rights and freedoms, giving the government total control of your life property and labor. Fraud is an intentional deception made for personal gain or to damage another individual. It isn't the individual person who is creating birth certificates, bonds, marriage certificates, vehicle registrations, driver's licenses, property tax and personal income tax using forged legal names, which are intentionally created to resemble and impersonate you for financial gain. Ultimately, Canadians are nothing more than collateral for a government that has never received permission from, we the people, to govern us in this manner. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and be sure to share.